ओम ज्ञातिरांगशलाकुरुमेडितस्मशीगुरव नम श्रीचैतन्य मनोपीष्ट स्थापित भूतले स्वयं मह्यम ददासी स्वकता वंदेह श्रीगुरो श्रीयुत पादकमल श्रीगुरून वैष्णवांश श्रीप सागरजात सहगण रघुनाथता तम सजीव साइत सवधूत पर्जन सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य श्रीराधा कृष्ण पाद सहगण ललिता श्री विशाखान्विता हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधो दीन बंधो जगत्पते गोपेश गोपिका कांत राधा कांत नमस्ते तत्र कांचन गौरंगी राधे वृंदा वनेश्वरी वृषभानुसुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वाचकुभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्ये वतीता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभो निनंद श्री अद्वैत गाधर श्रीवासादिगौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे मुखम करोति वाचाल अंगुम लंघयते गिरी यृपा तमह वंदे श्री गुरु दीनताण श्री परमाधव श्री चैतन्यमेश्वर नमस्ते सारस्वते देवे गौरवाण प्रचारणे हरे कृष्ण प्रभु स्मृति जी स्टैंडर्ड प्रणाम आई होप यू आर ऑल डूइंग वेल नाइस सो सॉरी इट्स स्टार्ट अ लिटिल यस सेइंग समथिंग ओके आई जस्ट डू द शेयर सर इन शेयर अम एक्चुअली बिफोर वी गेट टू द सेक्शन आई वाज जस्ट थिंकिंग दैट मे बी अ गुड आईडिया टू अम Uh, go over the uh, things about note, a few tips about taking notes, etc. Uh, because I remember towards the end of the session we were discussing about these points, uh, how to take notes, etc. Right? So that uh, let's try to cover that particular you know, guidelines for taking notes and guidelines to remember the scriptures also. You know, there are many times questions are being asked. Hmm, how do how do i remember the sloka how do i remember the translations etc etc so you know it's a, it may be a good idea to go to that though it's in it's not as per the sequence but i thought it be good to connect that because we were anyway talking about these points there there is no as it is any dependency as such but uh, it's something which we can uh, cover now um, as part of our logical flow you know let me do that first let me talk about right and strong uh, for taking notes mm -hmm. simple things only there's a I mean not like something which is uh, extraordinary or anything but it is good to uh, have a look at those some of the stories so I hope you are able to see my screen now. Yes, Prof. So there are a few important points that which we can you know, note down for basic guidelines for taking notes. So the uh, you know the, uh, always write the important points in short, brief words or statements. No need to. Write pages and pages. You know that won't make really much sense to us. Write the learn to be crisp in your notes taking. Write important points like maybe sometimes you will write in like develop the hints form kind of or just in uh, uh, acronyms and abbreviations kind of thing. 
so some or other make it short and you know e easy to meditate on the next is uh, one of the other things which my guru maharaj always insisted that form acronyms whenever possible to remember the verses easily like say for example this verse 4 1237 if you if you take that verse uh, let me let me try take it and share Because we may all not have the books, you know. Let me share also. Yeah. I hope you are able to see my screen. So this shloka is very interesting shloka. It describes the qualities of uh, a devotee. You know, <clears throat> Shanta has samadrusha shuddha. सर्वभूतानुरंजनाभूतानुरंजनाभूतानुरंजनाभूतानुरंजनाभूतानुरंजनाभूतानुरंजनाभूतानुरंजनाभूतानुरंजनाभूतानुरंजनाभूतानुर
some of them might be able to do it but by and large if we meditate on the shlokas and develop some uh, attachment to them and then uh, share those shlokas with, in our in our teaching that will be very helpful and in order to do that we need to develop some uh, uh, acronyms like this and you know that will be very useful to remember any time and then the other interesting thing is to to learn the shlokas with, with the, the sanskrit shlokas with its meaning you know and for that this method will be very helpful if you might be some of you might know this already but uh, if you don't know this is a very interesting way of uh, um, merging both the words and the um, it's the, and their meaning um, together you see uh, very it will be very effective for deep study because you can coin the phrases within the uh, shlokas and uh, while speaking the shloka in sanskrit you will also be remembering the uh, english meaning or whatever language you want to follow that that meaning is, will be there at the back of our mind like say pipanti a those who drink bhagavata bhagavata um, uh, uh, means uh, the supreme lord Bhag bhagavan hmm? and then atmanah satam what is atmanah satam means So, Atmanah uh, Satam means <clears throat> of the most dear to devotees. Krishna is the Supreme Lord who is most dear to the devotees. You know? And Kathamrutam, the nectar of the messages. Shravanapateshu Samrutam, whose ears are fully filled with the nectarian messages, the ear, the ear holes, you know, to the Shravanapateshu, to the holes of the ears, they are fully filled with the nectar of Krishna's messages. And what does that do? Punanti. It purifies us. Okay, from, from what? From Vishaya Vidushita Ashtyam. From the uh, polluted aim of life. Uh, Vidushita means polluted aim of life. Uh, material, of material enjoyment. We always have this polluted aim of life that I want to enjoy, I want to enjoy. Sir. And once that polluted aim of life is purified by either listening to Krishna Kada constantly, by drinking it, by enjoying it, by relishing it, in Rajanti, they go to Krishna's lotus feet. It is nothing but Golok So, like this, you you have put both of them together in your notes, and then you will space. You you will you will save space also, and you will be able to marry the two, the English meanings and the phrases, and then it will work very nicely. You know. So this is one interesting uh, thing which we can all try to follow. You don't, uh, you know, just give a little bit space and then write wherever possible the meaning there. And another form is the reverse form. How do you do this? Take the translation and within the translation fit in the Sanskrit words. And you will be amazed to see in either ways that uh, Prabhupada has made sure that the meaning of all the words is buried inside the translation. They are, they are revealed in the translation somehow or other. Those ye, who drink pibanti through oral reception, shravana puteshu, fully filled samrutam with the nectarian message. That is katha amrutam. Katha amrutam. Amrita means nectar. Katha means message. Of who Lord Krishna, that is Bhagavata. So this, while searching for this, you would have definitely done some real meticulous um, study uh, which will actually get uh, embedded in, uh, uh, you know, embossed in our hearts. So this, this shloka, of just some five, ten minutes of your uh, attempt, it will stay with you for your life. Any time in the sleep also, if we ask, you will be able to stay. So this is just one little, um, uh, you know, um, uh, tricks and tips to, for taking notes. Then going forward, then <coughs> when you're writing these shlokas or notes, you know, just write one or two words to represent the verse and write next to it. For example, this verse, you will be able to find the key word in this, in this entire uh, translation. Uh, one or two key words you'll be able to find out. Like say, for example, this oral reception is a very unique 
the word that is coined only by Prabhupada. Do not find this from anyone else. You will get into that a little bit more. Then another thing is you will you will say something like solution to purify the polluted aim of life. Like that, if you can just one or two phrases, you know, you coin it nicely, then that will stick with you. So anytime somebody asks, oh, my heart is polluted, what can I do? Then you say, you quote the shloka and say, this is the, um, this is the shloka which you can uh, refer to for your, uh, for your uh, problem. The next is refer to the notes frequently and contemplate. It's most important, right? Taking notes is one thing, but then we have to keep referring to it and then contemplate on the points. If we don't read our notes, then how much ever we efficiently we take the notes, it's of no use. You see, <coughs> the, we should keep reading the notes again and again. That's one of the success formula of my Guru Maharaj. He used to read his notes so much that any time you ask any point, immediately he'll be able to pick it up from the hundreds of stacks of notes that he had the night diaries and other things he had. Then finally, you repeat to others. When, when you write down some notes, take some points from there and when you call, talk to somebody over phone, just today I write, write this nice point, you know, I'd like to share with you. Like that, our discussion should be very simple and straightforward, that, very, that in which you can enjoy um, uh, the process itself. And then appreciate um, um, uh, the Prabhupada's book so much. And when we appreciate naturally, um, we, are, we will be able to en en engage others also to appreciate Prabhupada and his books. So, any questions in this before we move on? Shall we move on? I will also try to share one other slide where I have these points on the remembering the um, scriptural references, or remember the, how to remember the scriptures, guidelines to remember the verses, etc. Is that okay? Let me move on. I don't hear any. Yes. <clears throat> After we complete this, we'll get into that oral reception thing. <coughs> so first and foremost thing we have to remember is to develop bhakti, we need the, the base, the, that's the foundation in the form of knowledge. Without the foundation of knowledge, it is very difficult to develop. That's why bhakti, which is based on the foreground of full knowledge combined with um, um, uh, there's a beautiful statement in 1, 2, 12. Let me take that out. Devotional service which is based on the foreground of full, uh, full knowledge combined with detachment from material association and which is fixed in the uh, um, oral reception to Vedanta Shruti. Again, oral reception word comes in. See, Prabhupada is very fond of using this word oral reception. See, somebody can read this statement. So one of the best definition of devotional service. Uh, somebody read this statement. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Yes. Prabhuji. Devotional service which is based on the foreground of full knowledge combined with detachment from material association and which is fixed by the oral reception of Vedanta Shruti is the only preferred method by which by which the seriously inquisitive student can realize the absolute truth. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you so much, Prabhu. So there are a few interesting phrases here. First thing is, it, which is based on the foreground of full knowledge. Right? Our devotional story should not be like haphazard or sentimental. It should be based on the foreground of full knowledge. And then it should be combined with detachment from material association. That's the Vairagya. One side is Jnana and another is Vairagya. And after these two things, what is the most important thing? Fixed by the oral reception of the Vedanta Shruti. When we say Vedanta Shruti, we include Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavatam and all the purposes. Everything is Vedanta Shruti only. 
Because everything is a manifestation of Bhagavatam. Bhagavatam is Vedanta Sutra. So, continuously doing the oral reception, our uh, devotional service is fixed. First of all, it is based on this Jnana and Vairagya, and then it has to be fixed by the oral reception of the Vedanta Suti. Is the only perfect method by which a seriously inquisitive student can realize the absolute truth. Amazing, amazing statement this is. This one statement is nothing. It's it's like a paraphrasing the entire message of this verse. Tachyadha dana muna yoga jnana vairagya pashyanti atmani cha atmanam bhaktya shruta grihitaya. So that is a Prabhupada is always, uh, you know, is referred to as Bhakti Vedanta Swami. Why? Because for him, Bhakti is not simply sentimental. It is based on the Vedanta. And as Guru is also named the same way almost. Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasadha. So for us, we, we understand this whole thing, you know, which is based on the foreground of full knowledge. Because without knowledge, nobody accepts our uh, conclusions. Our knowledge has to be solid and it has to be fixed and it should be very clear. Anybody who has any question, it should be able to. Give. It's not that you have to become a scholar in all different shastras, but whatever little you know, you know fully and properly. That is the most important. Hmm? So, so let's um, now let's get back to our. So, <coughs> so we remember those things easily for which we have a natural attraction. If you naturally are attracted to something, there is no hard work needed to remember that. But because we are not having a natural attraction towards the Shastras, towards the scriptures, Shlokas, etc., we find it very difficult to remember them. So the first and foremost step is we should develop a genuine eagerness to gain knowledge about Bhakti by the scrutinizing study of Shastras, not simply like the superficial study. The scrutinizing, true, true, scrutinizing study, we show our eagerness. To, to gain the knowledge about bhakti. Because bhakti also has it's a science. So there should be there is a knowledge behind bhakti. You see, knowledge about bhakti that we have to extract and the juice, squeeze the juice and then relish it, enjoy it. So when we do this, we have that eagerness, then naturally it, it's not so difficult to remember the scriptures. Next point is repeat the verses a few times during the day. So today morning you are reading one shloka, then don't just leave, close the book and move on and do other things. Keep on reading at re, re, trying to remember at regular intervals. For a few times you do, and then after that it will be with you forever. That's the beauty of Sanskrit shlokas. And then share your realizations with others. Don't just keep it to yourself. Yesterday only we saw from Garuda Purana what uh, Yamraj will do if we don't share the uh, signs of Bhagavatam with others, which we know. And then Sometimes, you know, if you want to read the entire Kunti prayers or entire Brahma prayers, it's very simple. You just keep looking at the shlokas and keep reciting every day once. For a month you do, then the shloka, some of the shlokas will, will stick with you. And another month you do, then it will stick with, all of them will stick with you forever. You don't need to book at all. You just remember and like, like a thing, it will go on, you know, like a, automatically it will go on. So that is why we have to remember this one thing, Yadan fully endeavoring with determination. Then our, the verses will stick with our mind forever. Then the other important thing is to sing the verses lovingly and joyfully. And the, why we should do lovingly, joyfully? Because there is no difference between these shlokas and Krishna. They are the same. Krishna is this uh, Shabda Rupa. He's, he's, he's not in his, he's not Krishna, is in his Shabda Rupa. Huh? Krishna is the Shabda Rupa. rupa so, in this transcendental sound vibration, Krishna is wandering actually. There is a shloka in 5th canto, 18th chapter, 26th verse, I think, 5, 18, 26. Adrishta rupo vicharasti Uruswaraha. Uruswaraha means great sound, Vedic sound vibration. And in an, in an in, unseen form, invisible form, he vicharasti means wandering, you know, he keeps wandering in those shlokas, in those verses, in those uh, sound vibrations. See, that's why we should sing very lovingly. Um, and suppose you sing some shloka uh, of, of glorifying Krishna. You know? um, this same shloka is very nice. People, Bhagavata Atmana Satam Katham Ratam Shravana Pute Shusam Ratam Punantite Vishaya Vidu Shitashayam Prajantitat. Charanasaro Ruhantikam 
प्रजंती तरण सरोक हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे when we get to the chanda section we will try to recite a few other meters also which will be so loving uh, so, so lovely uh, so when we sing joyfully then the travel, loving relationship will develop with krishna in the form of the shabda rupa then there is nothing that separates us from there from the shlokas hmm? so that's a beautiful thing about uh, um, uh, <clears throat> then another interesting thing my guru maharaj always used to say so this mahavishnu goswami maharaj used to say is that the spongibility of our brain is lost due to the unwanted dirt that gets accumulated in uh, the corners of our heart see our heart as assume it is like a room in the room how much ever you may be doing the broom sweeping and everything the dirt gets accumulated in the corners isn't it in the edges or the corners it doesn't get accumulated in the center center it's easy to clean but in the corners is what is very difficult to uh, clean that those dirts that are accumulating in the corners those are the ones that destroy the spongibility of our heart actually our heart is like a sponge the more water you pour into the sponge the more it absorbs isn't it similarly our heart also our memory also it keeps keeps you keep on adding it will keep on absorbing that's why in children it's very easy for them to buy heart why because they don't have any kalmasha any uh, complication dirt 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 or complication but as we grow along we develop all kinds of different uh, anathas and that stops that destroys the spongibility of our brain so the, how do you increase the spongibility of the brain maharaj told us a very simple formula just increase the space and give more space to krishna in your heart because krishna is very soft so our heart also will become very soft the problem is we are giving more space for the dirts and less space for krishna that is why um, we are not able to um learn this shastras or develop the the um, uh, you know attraction to the um, the scriptures and upas etc so that is why it's it's, a, it's very important to increase the spontaneity of the brain next is meditate on the practical application of the meaning of the verses simply um uh, you know remembering the shloka alone is not enough so we that's why i told you in that notes a nice important uh, point on how we um uh, combine the words and the meaning and then we we when we while singing the shlokas itself we are singing with meaning you see so that is the important thing for practical application of the meaning um, of the verses we should take from the purport or you know from the shlokas hmm? uh, <clears throat> that's why maharaj always used to make this very powerful statement it is a number of verses that we put into practice that matters not the number of verses we memorize simply memorizing krishna is not going to appreciate it how many we put into practice that is more important right and then that's why we said the same thing you know this so it's an extension of the previous point that you remember the verses with meaning simply just to, if somebody says hey apurmanya masala pratishta jagadar ma pona not like that write down the words in the notebook with the word for word meaning like the example i showed contemplate on each words meaning and then in combine them in phrases like vipanti e bhagavat atmanah satam entire line you can make it into a simple statement right drink those who drink what they drink bhagavat uh, thing atmanah satam the those who are very dear devotees of krishna supreme master of god what they drink vipanti e bhagavat atmanah satam katam ratam they are drinking the nectarian juice of krishna's uh, transcendental uh, pastimes how do how do they drink through the oral reception through uh, the ears um, um, the uh, shravana puteshu samvritam and that uh, nectar is not just simply coming in drops it's coming in like a flood and but somehow or other they are uh, taking it fully into their heart through the ears they are able to uh, uh, receive everything fully like that you should remember the shloka with the logical meaning build build like building blocks you know you build the 
meanings along so that it brings a shape. That is realization. We are realizing it with our own endeavors. Mm -hmm. So then this we have already seen form acronyms. And then this is very important. Have unflinching faith that the shlokas are the sound incarnation of the Lord. We, many times we uh, forget that. We say, oh, shlokas, it's okay. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. They are actually non-different from Krishna. So shlokas are non-different from Krishna. Then the important point is completely depend on Krishna and put your sincere endeavor. Don't just think that by my own endeavor I can do. No, it is never possible. We do our endeavor, but depend completely on Krishna. Because why? Because remembrance itself comes from Krishna. So these are some of the points which I kind of consolidated together for the you know, to remember scriptures, to remember, to take notes, etc. Any questions so far? Any any questions, comments? And usually today the crowd is very quiet. Hey Krishna Prabhuji, yes, Prabhuji. Like uh, different tips and uh, to dwell into deeper and deeper realms of Prima Bhagavatam. Uh, I feel like uh, not all can be implemented uh, at the same time for all verses. It's like uh, we, no, may yeah. do, we may yeah. be doing multiple readings. So yeah. uh, every time we read, we can uh, implement one of the one or two of the ideas. Yes. So yes. We can relish again and again. Is it yes. like that or like, like yes, how, how you, do, how that... you personally read it? Like, like you implement all of them at the same time? No. For, it depends on the time, place and circumstances. You may... Uh, implement some, you may use some of these tips, you may use one of the tips, you may maybe, you may use, it's, it's like a, once you, like it's like this Prabhu, it's like a mixer juice, separately mango juice, uh, tomato juice and I'll be separately this thing. When you mix it into a single juice and drink, it's like a cocktail juice. No? <laughs> so all these scriptures, once we imbibe them in our hearts, then you don't have to Oh, I have to do like this at this point. I have to do what this. No, you don't think it just naturally comes. So you don't have to, you know, segregate these instructions also separately like this, like this, etc. They will come. They will. They will come and form a part of our uh, our study sadhana. Yeah, wherever it applies to you, you just apply it. That's all. Like, for example, forming acronyms. You can't keep forming acronyms for anything and everything. You'll become um, like a mad after acronym and you'll forget Krishna. <laughs> acronyms are supposed to be helping, <coughs> helping us learn easily. And then you come automatically. So wherever it is possible to apply the acronyms, you apply it and keep it ready. And that also, as long as you keep repeating it to others only, it will make sense. Otherwise, Simply I will form acronym and leave it and later I will come back and say I myself forget why, which acronym for what. So, so Jyoti Mataji, I see you asking this question about recorded version of the sessions. These are being recorded Mataji and yesterday also Anandram Prabhuji had shared the link. Uh, he will again share it today in the chat. We will we'll put it in the chat box Mataji. Yeah. We'll put it in the Thank chat you. box. Give us some time. Yeah. Um, so, yes, so the, does that answer your question, Anandram Prabhu? Yes, yes, Prabhu. Yes. Thank you. <coughs> Any other questions, comments? Hare Krishna Prabhuji, Dandrat Pranams. Ah, yes, Madhuji. Uh, last class you told about the Swanubhavam um, hmm. and the, about practical application. So, uh, probably kindly explain how how uh, uh, how how we should uh, up, uh, apply it or how we should uh, tell it uh, realizing way. It it comes through anubhava mataji. Say, see, an, each one's anubhava can be different. Okay, you can't experience my anubhava. No, I can't experience your anubhava. Correct. 
say you are taking care of your child that anubhavam only you have i may be doing my office work or do something else some preaching or whatever that is i only have that experience right but the beauty is that each of our experience anubhavam is equally potent so the same kupantiya bhagavata atmana satam example verse for example you can um, apply it with your experience the fa- challenges that you are facing in bringing up the children the, the, the child or the challenges you are facing in managing with their relatives and taking care of multiple things at home all those things right so same way i can say that hey, this is a challenge that i am facing it also that i will, that anubhav i will combine with the shastri reference the good so thing about shastri reference is that both of us will both for both our anubhavas the scriptural references will fit in if you do it uh, uh, sincerely and honestly you are saying something practical uh, no prabhu ji so uh, our practical experience we should uh, uh, mix in shastra that ha huh. it is not enough to just have the anubhavam alone otherwise everybody will say i had this anubhavam i had that anubhavam and it will become a chaos and as it is there anubhavam is ma- ma- mixed with modes right mm-hmm. our anubhavams are mixed with modes yes we, we are we are whatever experience we are facing 99% of the time it is mixed with modes so how can you keep that as a standard uh, for us to preach to others or for us to even uh, take some lessons ourselves that is why we have to combine it with shastras which is beyond which transcends the three modes you get it okay. so our anubhava on its own is not pure but when it is combined with the shastras it becomes pure shastras on its own is pure but unless you find an an opportunity to apply those uh, instructions in our own life it will not make sense to us isn't it how much ever beautiful brinjal or uh, uh, this um, um, uh, mango or anything that you will draw on a piece of paper it will look very nice but only when it is edible or that which you can eat only then it will be of use to us no otherwise what is the use of drawing a beautiful uh, picture of a mango but you can't eat it you can't taste it correct mm-hmm. So that is that is how we should see it, Mother. That helps. We should realize, Prabhu Ji. We should realize and. Ah, uh... huh. realize comes when we realization comes when we naturally and humbly take up the instructions in our heart and try and develop that eagerness to practice them. Krishna will enable us. Krishna will empower us. Okay. and don't be too anxious about don't be too anxious about practicing it also krishna will give the opportunity also and he will give us the intelligence also matas mate gyanam apohanam smriti and gyanam also comes from krishna so if you are sincere then he will give automatically whenever it is needed at the right time thank okay. you nice mother thank you nice question anything else uh, hari krishna prabhu ji dhanyavad pranam jai shila prabhu yes mother so, so i i just wanted to share with the group that uh, um i found uh, that bhagavat ratnamala which is a pocket kind of book uh, by the bhaktivedanta uh, uh, that gaurang darshan prabhu that is a uh, publication uh, very mm-hmm. useful where uh, it has the theme of the verse in a short few uh, words yes. and then <clears throat> and then that that is good for uh, remembering uh, the verses along with the theme like that right so i just wanted to share thank that. you thank you mata ji yes um, um i i've heard about it you know it's really uh, one of the one very nice uh, presentation which gives us um, see one thing i will tell you prabhu smata ji there are so many different types of things coming which is really you know worth appreciating what um, like you know um, glorifying everything is there and there is no doubt about it but the beauty of our shastras that prabhupada has given is that each one of us have our own scope to expand with our our own capacity you understand so this this is something which i did with my help uh, with, with the, my, the help of my guru maharaj instructions and trying to put something 
more and trying to bring up a consolidated uh, thing um, uh, view of it but this is not all you can have your own version of uh, i think by by your constant study constant constant study you know, repeated study so that way like gaurang darshan prabhu did so much hard work that's why he was able to come up with such nice uh, representations but does that not that, that does not mean that these are the only ways available that's where that it's krishna consciousness is so dynamic especially this our, our shastra uh, uh, meditating on the shastra shastra, shastra adhyaya you know um, adhyayan uh, that uh, each one can develop their own nice ways and this will maybe inspire you to develop more on your own also there is no like hard and fast rules or regulations here and also um, <clears throat> recently at our temple uh, his grace vaisheshika prabhu he um, sh- he started a like the shloka exchange program where mm-hmm. people would uh, write uh, a shloka and uh, mm-hmm. on an index card and then they would after uh, you know meditating on that verse for few days they would exchange with other um devotees it was during narsingadev uh, prince uh, day mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. celebrations so uh, and later on uh, those index cards were offered at lotus feet of narsingadev uh, so well, that he wanted to make this as a habit for um, people to get into the process yes. of yes yes vaisheshika prabhu is vaisheshika prabhu is another stalwart um, i don't know many of you would have heard his lectures you know for the first 15 20 minutes it will be only you know shloka 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 so uh, even his always sindhadev maharaj used to call him as he's a shloka man you know <laughs> so so nice they are uh, absorbing themselves in the um, i'm so happy and constantly proud that we are we are in the midst of such wonderful stalwart devotees that you know we are we are really protected safely you know we don't have to go anywhere thank you sudevi mataji for sharing that so this this side is the shlokas and you know enjoying that we will come to that section also when you are to the side Okay, let's go to this point of um, oral reception. Where is that shloka? We had that oral reception shloka. No? This is the one. So when I was, I couldn't complete this yesterday. That we talked about uh, the different Puranas uh, glorifying Bhagavatam. Uh, but uh, the funny thing is, in this, you know, all the other Puranas glorify Bhagavatam. but inside bhagavatam you will not find any other inside bhagavatam you will not find it glorifying any other scriptures like other puranas upanishads etc but bhagavatam glorifies itself <laughs> in these shlokas you know some of the shlokas only i shared there are many more there is only one other scripture that is glorified in bhagavatam any guesses anybody so i guess i'm not going to give you marks or penalize you dharm samhita bhagavad gita narayan mata just put it it's not a bhagavad gita that is the only scripture that is glorified in bhagavatam there is only one shloka and that is the gita mahatmya inside bhagavatam and that is the best glorification of bhagavad gita you see um, i'll tell you the verse number or we will probably narayan mata ji can probably share the verse number she might know since she said it is bhagavad gita would you like to share the verse number mata ji there is only one shloka in which it is bhagavad gita <coughs> so it's 115 yes 115 27 that is a shloka that is um, so beautifully that where bhagavatam beautifully glorifies bhagavad gita in other words arjuna is glorifying bhagavad gita but it is inside bhagavad bhagavatam so there is the gita mahatmya inside bhagavatam other than bhagavad gita no other shastras are glorified inside bhagavatam but all other shastras you take puranas wherever you take you saw yesterday 
Garuda Purana, Skanda Purana, Matsya Purana, Padma Purana, and everywhere you see Bhagavatam is glorified. A separate section is dedicated for glorification of Bhagavatam, Gita, Bhagavatam Mahatma. Where will you find this? So that itself proves the supremacy of Bhagavatam, right? Okay, so let's come to this oral reception word. So let's try to understand what does oral reception mean? What do you mean by oral reception? So let's throw it out into the um, wide open um, our, our group. Who would like to guess first? You are asked to drink through oral reception. Uh, through our ears, Shravanam. Correct. But what does oral reception mean as by itself? Why Prabhupada could have Prabhupada could have simply said through hearing, those who drink through hearing, why there is a big difference between why why this instead of using the word hearing is using the word oral reception. Split that into two yeah. words and then try to understand why Prabhupada hearing is using these two the, words. Hearing from the authorities. Ah, that is fine. Correct. That is correct. But what other things this word can imply? Oral reception. I can um, just guess, Prabhu. So it, yeah, it yeah, it's all about that, guessing. Okay. Yeah. The, uh, so those who drink through oral reception, it is mentioned. So Correct. drink because it is kathamritam amrita. So it is nectarian messages. Like the nectar, right. nectar right. has to be drunk, but the, yes. it is not drinking through our mouth. It has to be mm. drunk through our ears Correct. by giving the uh, attentive hearing. So uh, that correct. Is attentive reason. hearing is one thing. So forget about this. Just you, just um, you uh, think about these words in a general use. Where we will use this word reception? Where we will use this oral word? Hare Krishna. Yes, Prabhu. Um, is it that? Uh, to hear Bhagavatam, like just hearing Bhagavatam is not uh, the criteria, but to have the uh, acceptance to hear or... Huh, correct, but as I told you, Prabhu, please try to think of where and all you will use this word reception. Prabhuji, reception means to receive something, somebody who is very, you know, respectable, respectable and... To receive somebody with respect. Okay, take the example of office reception first to begin with. In the office, there in all offices there will be some some reception. So in that reception, the person will be sitting there, either a man or a woman, somebody will be sitting there. And whoever comes, what do what do they do? They will greet the visitors. Yes, with and smiling, they will, uh, attend cheerfully to them. They will, yeah, and cheerfully they will receive, isn't it? Yes. They might have a very bad day in the, at home. Some They would have got some real bashing from their elders or somebody or the children would have behaved in a very um, um, dissatisfactory way. They will come with all the tension to the office. But uh, when they sit in the chair and somebody comes asking for something, will they show their frustration out to them? No, right? They will. They will keep themselves composed. And even if somebody comes angrily and says, hey, you gave this appointment, it didn't work, this, that, and all. And then will she again shout back at him? She will talk pleasingly, isn't it? Or she will hear pleasingly what they are speaking. And then react accordingly, isn't it? So, yeah. even when we are approaching Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, it should be the same mood we should have. Irrespective of whatever our personal challenges or other domestic challenges you may have. When we come to uh, Sastras, we just shut our shop and just um, uh, all the distractions, uh, noises and distractions and fully focus on. So oral reception. Hmm? So where else we'll use the word reception? Though? Wedding reception? Hmm. So what do we do in wedding receptions? We, uh, the guests introduce themselves to the uh, bride and the bridegroom and, uh, and so what, they get just to imagine, know. Just, just imagine the entire scenario. Whatever is happening there, that's fine. But what is the overall, overall mood there? 
everybody is happy to they, they will be like show cracking jokes and cool very active enthusiastic nobody will be sitting morose like this isn't it if somebody is sitting like that then they will say something is wrong something is wrong correct yeah so that joy that uh, ecstasy that, that that enthusiasm that joy of uh, uh, you know being part of a big festival uh, function etc that overcomes our personal things and secondly we are we are very enthusiastic seeing our enthusiasm everyone else will be enthusiastic too so that is another nice example of the using the word uh, of this word reception how we receive the message of bhagavatam right that is what it actually means when you are drinking means you are drinking joyfully you are drinking cheerfully you are drinking with great faith and conviction that this is the greatest message and where else you will use the word reception uh, we should uh, we should receive bhagavatam or we should uh, we should uh... except as we are receiving krishna directly himself can we understand yes that? yes at the end of the day that's what it all means now you may have some problems physical problem mental problem but when krishna is coming in the form of this uh, shastras this shlokas etc or propas purports and you know all this everything combined together i'm talking about you will give the maximum attention there all these inconveniences will, will not come and uh, disturb our uh, flow that's what it means okay where else we will use the, where else you will use this word reception a uh, proji like yeah, arjuna like heard from dronacharya but eklavya uh, arjuna received from dronacharya but eklavya just heard from behind so there is a difference between hearing and receiving ha huh, that is of course he followed obediently that is a very important point that you brought up about uh, you know which should be the the hearing should also be with proper character etiquette the uh, the the you know obedience and all that that's also there receive when you receive you properly with humility pariprashnana pari pranipatena pariprashnana and sevaya hmm? that's correct but still one more meaning is there where we keep on using Prabhuji, this word uh, yes ma'am prabhu ji like the dish antenna it will attract the ah. uh, signals reception ah. yes. uh, that Very like nice, that. Very nice. Yes. So, what does that mean? Expand a bit on it. You caught the right meaning of this word reception. What does that mean? How how do we expand for that? We have to tune the dish to receive ah, the signals properly. Exactly. Uh, so, in this in, in this antariksha, in this uh, atmosphere, no, so many different noises are there. Somewhere you tune, you will get some sports. Somewhere you tune, you will get politics. Somewhere you tune, you will get uh, movies. Somewhere you tune, you will get some other. Uh, um adventure or whatever like that you keep tuning the to the reception the the waves are there everywhere you just tune yourself to the right um, uh, that signal uh, audio signal then it you you so are able to catch it you are able to catch it isn't yeah. it basima pani nakin vagasa somebody can mute them so the same way in so many materialistic thoughts and the waves and other things that is going on all around bhagavatam messages are also there in this in the antariksha somewhere when i say and somewhere it's like say this is like again they are talking about online we are physically seeing each other and all that but what is actually happening it's it's actually going through the space the signals isn't it the audio signals and you know that link through that link you are able to tune in and then connect to that uh, reception so we are able to connect here like this there are so many different uh, things going on meetings going on some are uh, political some are uh, this thing and all that so many things are going on but when we tune ourselves to say by our eagerness by our enthusiasm when we tune ourselves to a specific uh, Uh, oral uh, reception that is the real receiving our dishantana as mataji said it, it is it is wide enough and it is strong enough to receive all the uh, signals then we will be 
directly connected to the uh, transcendental uh, sound vibration you see this one word reception you see how many different meaning it is giving did you kind of uh, follow this uh, this particular point i want to talk about reception i have not even gone into the word oral oral actually there are so many meanings one meaning i will tell you aura we say no so the aura aura means a person's aura is there by their their purity that their aura is there so even if the person leaves that aura will continue to exist that you have seen in the scientific thing and all that so audio it is it's, it's oral that says it's called audience hmm? so oral and audio both are connected together so through the, through hearing we are able to perceive or connect with that person that that particular person through hearing the voice you know we connect with that person um, much more strong, strongly or hearing about his qualities from someone else we are able to connect to that person more strongly we are able to tune into that person our meditation our contemplation everything gets focused into that person's qualities so that's what's called oral reception which means we are we are really with awe and reverence we call it right so that awe and reverence we are approaching krishna in the form of his shabda shabda roopa that is the way we can actually drink if you are really relishing the sound vibration form of the lord the literal incarnation of the lord you see how much is buried inside these two words do you have any other things that is coming out from you i am my knowledge is limited actually like this if you meditate no on prabhu pas the deep words then you will be able to appreciate it even more you will be able to enjoy bhagavatam even more you get attached to bhagavatam even more <coughs> i i hope it help to some extent let's say prabhu pad chose you no know, each and every word he chose so meticulously he didn't just write just he didn't write just like that that came you know whatever comes i will write no so bhagavatam is so krishna himself is coming so we should even for a normal bride and the groom we are doing so much of uh, big big things for to receive them then what to speak of krishna himself we should be able to receive krishna also in that in that with that same awe and reverence and joy and cheerfulness then bhagavatam will reveal itself to us we don't have to go and struggle finding out what is the meaning it will reveal itself to us like i was struggling with some particular challenge for uh, about uh, understand about uh, accepting something for for a long time and suddenly one fine day i was reading some shlokas that I mean, it was always the back of my mind how do i find a problem or solution to this problem suddenly i find a beautiful verse which reveals a, a, a pandora box of um, um, understanding to uh, to face that's a challenging situation for me so that is how it will come any time and don't worry today is so many years i have trying but well, i am not getting much realization no it will come when it is supposed to come you just do your job of sincerely uh, studying Prabhupada Shastras, and he will ensure that what comes at the right time, he and Krishna will make sure we are we are properly um, um, taken care of. So I'll stop here. It's also time. Um, we got to be you know uh, mindful of the time of our devotees. So any questions or thing for the next few minutes, we can we can discuss further. Already ten five. We will stop here and wait to hear some. Hmm.
हरे कृष्ण प्रभु जी इन फर्स्ट क्लास क्लास यू टोल दैट प्रहलाद महाराज ही वांटेड टू ही वाज अफ्रेड एंड ऑफ दिस मटेरियल एक्सिस्टेंस ही वांटेड टू गो टू लॉर्ड बट अर्लियर यू टोल दैट ही वांट्स टू सर्व हिज गुरु सॉरी आई डिंट गेट यू मदर जी व्हाट्स दैट Uh, he was afraid uh, of the material world correct okay. uh, he, uh, he wants to uh, go to lord a uh, go near lord but again when uh, again he is telling that uh, i want to serve uh, uh, serve guru so he, uh, 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 right uh, uh, so what is it about uh, uh, want, not it's like contradictory he wants uh, to go to krishna also he is telling one hand on the one hand he is telling i want to come to you when will you call me and then again he is telling i think it is better to serve your disciple as a sir your uh, devotee my guru maharaj uh, so i would rather do that that is a transcendental leela between krishna and his devotees you don't have to worry too much about it okay that's because its inspiration is coming from krishna in the heart so he wants to show that one is so better than the other on the one hand he is telling please call me krishna back to your thing and then he gives more inspiration to pralad maharaj because those verses those prayers are not spoken by pralad maharaj those prayers of those uh, shlokas are sp- uh, spoken by uh, by the inspiration of uh, narsingh dev it's narsingh dev who inspires him to speak so it is ultimately it is his uh, thoughts that comes out in the form of those beautiful uh, prayers this is thoughts and philosophy whatever singadev wants to tell through pralad maharaj pralad maharaj one most important thing is that he made himself qualified to be controlled completely by krishna that is what a devotee's ultimate objective is We should qualify ourselves to make ourselves qualified to be completely controlled by Krishna and spiritual master. That's it. Our job is done. Seems to be the beauty of all the uh, prayers of uh, the devotees, na? Who like uh, uh, whether they may be uh, seemingly uh, very qualified or uh, they may be uh, very. Uh, in a species like uh, elephant species like gajendra we see that uh, very beautiful prayers are being recited it's so that we can see that it's like grace of the lord through from the mouth of the devotees yes it's all otherwise how can i mean of course it is their qualification that they they force krishna to come and give his mercy right but at the same time we should also give credit to krishna for um enabling that knowledge uh, for them to speak those knowledge transcendental knowledge so that way krishna is enjoying himself sharing his uh, i mean like uh, being an instrument in the hands of his devotees your devotees that's his past time thank you for the nice question these are these things will come out when we start um uh, discussing the reading bhagavatam deeper and deeper these things will start coming out anything else prabhu ji you mentioned about um... Uh, like uh, actually our mind is like a uh, sponge and uh, just like sponge absorbs uh, water as much as you pour um, mm-hmm. actually we are like that but because we have some dirt uh, we are unable to take it like that you mentioned yeah. <clears throat> yeah. but some i feel like my memory is too limited and it's it doesn't that is a uh, concoction that is our mind is lazy and that is why it is giving all these arguments the no no don't think 
don't record too much you will remember you will forget the more, most important things in your life so these things anyway are in the book we can any time refer but you have to remember 10 years before this person did this to me and if i forget then you know i will lose respect we should know that i remember or she should know that i rem- i remember that insult even till now so you keep it in your rom read only memory <laughs> mm. so mind is playing all the tricks mataji nothing else so when when Otherwise, we uh, yeah. when we when we keep uh, memorizing newer and newer verses uh, sometimes you are not memorizing you are not memorizing you are contemplating on it and uh, Im- absorbing them in your heart that's all i never re- remember i never memorize even one shloka in all my life i would always go by the verse like i said you know i will go with the word you find the word with the next word and then connect the meaning then remember okay bibanti e bhagavata atmana satam okay this is what it means katham ratam shravana puteshu samvritam samvritam means overflowing and fully flowing and fully filled like that you develop the meaning form the develop the hits kind of a thing and then form your own picture of the uh, shape you form your own shape form for the uh, um, verses you don't have to remember every single verse in bhagavad gita and bhagavata as much as you can that you really relish and you can keep practicing them not only just simply reciting speaking like parrots but you know we have to we have to enjoy them first and then which can be implemented in any anywhere and then also that which can be shared to others for their own benefit also so uh, what do we do prabhu when um, reciting of verses on a daily basis like say uh, chanting shikshashtakam verses before chanting uh, it becomes a little mechanical sometimes like oh now earlier it was difficult to memorize them and then when it, I, we got it memorized now it becomes more mechanical um, how do we not get into that and uh, still uh, while we chant those verses we uh, feel the meaning of the verses and accordingly that is where that, that is where you are right without proper application things can become a ritual like say for example shashtakam if you simply recite the sanskrit alone it can be a ritual so what you do you recite the english also because propa that written that beautiful meaning for each one of the translations for each one of those kandas then you will be able to appreciate it a little bit more and then what you do is you find places wherever propa is referring this uh, this shikshashtakam i am just taking that as an one example where how he explains it nicely you know in different contexts and then start meditating on with respect you know naturally they will form a special place in our hearts like we know there are some shlokas for which which are special place in our heart so like that you develop your own special place and then start keep keep meditating on them keep whenever you find some ai nanda tananjan kinkaram for example you just take out and one other <laughs> thing guru maharaj always used to do is that he will always try to find out the speciality from each shloka something unique from each shloka like say for example that uh, oh my lord i am so unfortunate to attractions for the holy names does uh, that particular thing no um durdayivam idrisham iha janina anuragah you will see some key words in there and then he he took those key words and then he said see these are the five key words which you should remember in this particular verse and why that each one of them is very important he will he will form a chain of thoughts around that so you do research it's not something that they had written and went away that's why the shodhaga swamis they were doing research scrutinizing research on the uh, uh, on the shlokas and their meanings deep meanings and we are not able to even understand one of those meanings atparama verse you know how much chaitanya mahaprabhu went depth, into the depth of it Isn't it? So, like that, every shloka one can go deeper and deeper. But it depends on it. It 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 is dependent on how much we actually give that on reference. We don't say, "Oh, I've had enough. Let me stop here." No, we should never ever think that. Oh, I've had enough of this shastras. I mean, 
What is that? Santosha Trishu Kartavya. Hmm? Swadhare Bhojane Dane. Three things we should always be satisfied in our life. What is that? Our, one, our own family, spouse. Hmm? Swadhare. Hmm? Then Bhojan. Whatever is the amount of food that we get for that day. One, one day we may get a seven course meal. Another day we may just get one you know, handful of kichadi. That's all. But either way we should be satisfied. That's all what the, uh, is, is, is meant for us that day. And then Bhojane um, uh, Dhane. Whatever is the amount of wealth that we get in spite of all our hard work, we should be satisfied with it. We should not look at someone and say, hey, he is getting a lot more than me. I am only getting this much. He is not at all working and I am working so much. Those kind of comparisons doesn't make much sense at all. It leads us to get up. So these three things we should always be satisfied with. Then our whole life will be peaceful and we will have save a lot of time. Because most of our problems, most of the time we are wasting on these three things only. Running after these three things only. So now the second line, what does it say? Santosha Trishu Na Kartavya. Three things we should never be satisfied with. What does that mean? The time you are saving from wasting in those first three items, you will put those in the second three items. What are these three items? Santosha Trishu Na Kartavya. Swadhyaya Japa Dana Yoga. You should never be satisfied the amount of scriptural, scriptural study that you do. And you should never be satisfied the amount of Japa you do. And you should never be satisfied the amount of charity you do. Swadhyay Japa Dana. This is how our Shastras give such nice way, you know, shows the real, the transcendental way. Prabhuji, it is the yes. verse by Chanakya Pandit, right, Prabhu? Yes, yes, yes. So, our Shastras are fully filled with so many nice illuminating shlokas. You can just keep on sitting and discuss all these various shlokas and their meaning and that itself will take ages and ages. Our entire life will be filled with this. And Prabhupada's purport. Just take one line of Prabhupada's purport and you will amazingly, you, you will be amazed to see how much is written in that. We will go into that. As you know, we will take a few statements of Prabhupada's purport and try to meditate and churn them part of our discussions. So this is how Bhagavatam is spread everywhere. You just have to have the eyes to see. You may say this verse is not in Bhagavatam, but don't you think this is the same message as we have? The conclusive message is the same as in Bhagavatam. That's how we should, we should be expert in, you know, um, taking shelter of the Shastras and taking the right message at the right time. Sorry, somebody has raised the question. I think Sarchana Mataji. Yes, Mataji. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, Dandar Pranam. Dandar Pranam. See, we have also heard that um, whether you understand the meaning or not, just reciting the Sanskrit shlokas mechanically also is a very purifying thing. And that is why yeah. so many times we have this Bhagavad Gita recitation sessions, you know, two hours. Yeah. Then yeah. Bhagavatam shlokas. Then mm -hmm. how important are these things? I mean, some people lay a lot of stress on these two-hour recitation. So it is true because recitation is actually non-different from Krishna. Because when you recite the, the shlokas, the sound vibration is really Krishna. It's truly Krishna. So we will be able to absorb ourselves with the sound vibration so much that you know, we will enjoy the um, uh, um, enjoy Krishna in that form. That is why it's a, it's a Shabda Rupa. Hmm? But many times we don't even but, understand the meaning. Yes, of yes, yes, yes. Uh, yes, I am coming there. So this itself is. See, Maharaj had written a very nice statement in one of the slides. I have written that the the the, the vibration of the Sanskrit shlokas um, has a hypnotizing effect that is inver invariably lost when you translate into other languages. So that is the beauty of Sanskrit shlokas. So we should not undermine it at any cost. But having said that, the other side is also dangerous that I will only do recitation and then everything is all done. No, mm. that won't work. We should, as you go deeper and deeper, you enjoy more and more getting into the, into the depth of the service, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You don't just uh, hover around on the, on the surface. Suppose you mm. are doing deity worship. Initially, people may, the, the other the, the pujari may teach you, you put it here, you put it there, etc., etc. 
for some time you may do like this here there then you will start finding your own ways to uh, do the different color combinations and different uh, things whatever the gels and everything isn't it hmm. who is giving you that uh, inspiration you are doing it on your own but then you are following the authority but you are you are trying it your own experimentation so this shastras it's very important to understand the inner meaning only then we can explain hmm. otherwise if somebody is asking something just quote the shloka we will not tell the meaning then how will it make sense hmm. so always definitely the recitation has its own unique effect which is not there in any other language you can read one paragraph of some some uh, newspaper there's the article but it will not make any sense to you but you just recite one shloka from bhagavad gita it will be totally different Mm-hmm. It, will, it will give a transcendental touch of Krishna. Brahma Samsparsham. Mm-hmm. We, we get the touch of Krishna by recitation. But touch alone is not enough. We want Krishna to stay with us. So that is why this inquisitiveness, scrutinizing study, etc. The, all these actually increases our attachment for Krishna. I will tell you one shloka. Today when we were reading this shloka, Devi Mataji wrote 4.22.22. Can somebody read the 4.22.22? If uh, Parishit Maharaj was not sitting and asking all these inquisitive questions, where will we be with the, the understanding of the absolute truth and philosophy of um, uh, our Krishna consciousness, etc. Okay. So when we have the intelligence, it's better use it. See, just read the translation for this verse 4.22.22. Five items which by which he is saying, so the Sanat Kumara say, uh, by which one can increase the attachment uh, for devotional service. So I have stopped the sharing. Huh? Okay, one second. Please read this. Sashraddhaya Bhagavad Dharma Charyaya. Anybody wants to read this translation? I'll read it too. Yeah. Uh, attachment for the Supreme can be increased by practicing devotional service, inquiring about the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Applying Bhakti Yoga in life, worshipping the Yogeshwara, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and by hearing and chanting about the glories of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. These actions are pious in themselves. See, these five items are listed so nicely. If you see, only when you inquire about the Supreme Lord, you can actually apply the the Bhakti Yoga in life. If you don't inquire at all, what will happen? So for inquiring... Jignasa, you need contemplation. And for contemplation, deep study is required. And for that, proper hearing and chanting is required. So after doing all these things, only this worshipping the Yogeshwara will make even more sense to us. See, you are fanning the Lord. Simply you fan the Lord without any understanding, you just do and come. But if somebody tells you that, hey, you fan the Lord because, you, you know, by that you will be giving him nice, um, uh, making uh, his uh, thing comfortable. And he feels happy when devotees do this. Uh, like that, if you feel, then they will do it with attachment, isn't it? That's like that. So in every step, there is always a scope to increase and, and uh, uh, fine-tune it, fine-tune the seva even more. So when somebody says that recitation is enough, that's what their level is. Let them do that. Mm-hmm. And then you just don't uh, go fight, argue with them. That is also, Krishna is pleased with them also. Because with their level, whatever they can do, they are doing something. But if you have the capacity to do even more, you do it. And you develop your, maybe some more, some will get attached, I mean, interested in listening or discussing with you. So, right? Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, I think we'll stop here. We have done some extra. So let's go uh, further. You know, tomorrow we'll try to discuss a little bit more on the different study methods and other uh, what points. Thank you so much, Prabhu Smataji.
हरिहरि